Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of Film Boyabase. My name is Allison Parker, here with Agatha Christie. <laughs> and I'm Logan Albright, here with no cats. <laughs> you should get a cat. I'm always telling you, you should get a cat. So he, we are here to talk about the new Nick Cage film, Color Out of Space, based upon a novel. Well, really more of a short story by H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, so there's been a lot of Lovecraft movies made over the last, what, 50, 60 years, um, if, if not more. And there's the Lovecraft Country TV show that's out. Um, before we get started, what's your heretofore favorite film so far of, of something that he wrote? I think it's interesting that you say there's a lot of Lovecraft movies because I feel like there are very few given how many stories he wrote and how popular they are. He does have a good oh. oeuvre. You know, I thought Guillermo del Toro was going to do at the Mountains of Madness and it fell through, yes. which would have been great. Um, I guess I guess my favorite so far would be Reanimator, but it's not that great. <laughs> I can't think of any really good ones. It's surprising oh. to me how, how infrequently his movies are filmed or his stories are filmed. I love In the Mountains of Madness too, and I really wanted to like the Sam Neill version that came out a billion years ago. Sorry, Sam Neill. But I didn't. And the Guillermo del Toro one that you're mentioning... Um, it was in development hell for a really, really long time, and then they finally just it gave up the ghost, and they decided not to do it. There was this horrible film that about the time we were in college of um, Dagon. Uh, did I pronounce that okay? I always said Dagon, but who knows? Oh, you know, I did two for 10 years, and then I switched it up. So let's see what the third decade will bring of me mispronouncing <laughs> Lovecraft. <laughs> and then... Um, there's an, I know that there's another one I've seen. Help me. We'll cut all this out. We'll cut all this out. I don't know of any, like, Call of Cthulhu that have been made. Uh, Dunwich Horror is a good story. Dunwich Horror! Dunwich Horror. Okay. Oh, that was made into a movie? I didn't know that. Yes, it is. And it's not great. But what I wanted to tell you is that this movie, my, um, my coworker told me this, it, it, it is going to prompt two more... Uh, Lovecraft films and Dunwich Horror is supposed to be the next one. I hope the new ones are better than the uh, the one we just watched. Uh, right. Well, and um, you had me read Dunwich Horror either last year or the year before. Yeah, it was a while ago, but I, I think I had you read a bunch of the Lovecraft stories because I got his complete works and I've read all of them and there's a lot of great stories in there. Um, really imaginative writer, lots of great, you know, um, very influential. I'm kind of annoyed by how influential he is because you see everywhere like Cthulhu t-shirts and plushies and things and it's like, it's a little bit overdone at this point. But he is a great writer. I, I'm sick of it. So I think of this movie, and it's a, it's very surreal. It's very trippy. It's hallucinogenic. But I think of it as being in two parts. There's the part where Nick Cage does not overact, where he's completely normal. Like it, it could be anybody's, you know, 55 year old dad. And then there's Nick Cage being Nick Cage for the rest of the film. Right. So let's let's give people a brief rundown of the plot. I'll say that it, it bears pretty little resemblance to the actual story. And that's one of the things I disliked about it is this, a, a whole part of Lovecraft's aesthetic is his vision of like this kind of decrepit, decaying, inbred New England. And this movie didn't have that feel. Like it, it felt a little too clean and modern for me. Like it didn't have that kind of like old world, everything's falling apart thing to it that uh, Lovecraft stories have. But it starts off with uh, the, the young girl who's practicing Wicca out in the woods, and it's a bit of a red herring because it's not a story about witchcraft or anything, but they make you feel like it's going to be. And then she meets this uh, this uh, like water surveyor who comes out to check the water, and her family's living on this farm where they're raising alpacas out in the wilderness, uh, far away from any kind of hospitals or medical care. Um, and uh, the, a meteor comes and hits in their yard, and they're like, oh my god, there's a meteor, and then the meteor disappears, and then weird things start to happen. Uh, the, the meteor hits, and instantly I'm drawn into War of the Worlds comparisons, and I know both of the source material for, for War of the Worlds and for anything Lovecraft is, they're both very old, but I feel like you can't help but draw that comparison. And maybe the Tommyknockers too, if you want to... Oh my God, the Tommy Knockers. That's a horrible book. That's when I stopped reading Stephen King. I used to read a lot of Stephen King, and then I read the Tommy Knockers, and I thought, nope, done with this. I, I understand. Uh, I 
I agree. It was a, a picturesque kind of pastoral environment. Like I would love to go live in that house, if not visit that house as an Airbnb or what do they call it? Do they call it a farm or do they call it a ranch? But yeah, I guess it's more of a ranch because they're raising alpacas, which is a problem I have with the movie straight out of the gate. I can't wait to hear about it. Alpacas are the poor man's llama and anyone who would choose an alpaca over a llama is no good in my book. So when they first came on screen, my husband was like, it's llamas. And I was like, it's not. <laughs> if your best friend is known as the llama, you get real good at differentiating between alpacas and llamas. I guess it's good that your name isn't um, Alistair Parkinson Clydesdale Alfalfa. <laughs> yeah, <that would> be <laughs> your initials would be Alpaca. <laughs> Anyway, we'll cut all of this out. Rich needs a t-shirt that says, <laughs> that's standing. So I was really kind of disappointed that the whole storyline of the daughter b being a witch was just excised, completely exorcised from the movie because it was so interesting and it set these beats. But then they never really came back to it. And toward the end, I was like, oh, this is how it's going to tie in. I'm always amused when people... When people portray Wicca or witchcraft in movies or occultism in general, because I'm fairly knowledgeable on the subject, and uh, it's like they do one minute of research and they have like one thing that's correct in it, and then the rest of it is all wrong, and it always cracks me up because like her Wicca practice, like there was one thing that was right about it, and I got excited, and then everything else was wrong. Um, so that's always funny, but yeah, I think it was deliberately put in just to throw you off the scent. Um, the thing I love about Lovecraft is how just like otherworldly it is and I don't mean that in a space alien kind of way like there's real atmosphere and real like it's called cosmic horror for a reason you know it really kind of has this this creeping um, fear of the unknown and the outer darkness and all this stuff and the Colorado space is fundamentally a alien story but it's not like an like a Close Encounters of the Third Kind alien story or an E.T. or anything like that. It's a lot more dark and scary than that and a, a very different from your traditional science fiction story. And I felt like this movie just lapsed into like, it's, it did all this setup to try to make it seem like it was going to be creepy or different. And then it just fell into, oh, it's aliens. It's an alien story. And it was on autopilot from there on out. Yeah, and they kind of misuse Jolie Richardson. She's just this classically trained English actress, and they just couldn't bring her up to the task, and I felt real shabby about that. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, when you get Nicolas Cage in a movie, you know the acting's not going to be great, but I felt like all, all around, there was, a, like, the younger brother, the girl's younger brother is a, a big part of the movie, and... You know, he's the first one to really start talking to the aliens and, and get to know them and stuff. And he's not a very good actor. Um, the water inspector is not a very good actor. There's this character out in the in the woods who's like a, a Cheech and Chong, like stoner who lives in a, in a cottage nearby. It's literally Chong. It's Tommy Chong. Yeah, it's Tommy Chong. And it's just like, it's so like cliche and not that interesting. And like, I don't know. I, I found all these characters a little bit too cardboard for my liking. And then Nicolas Cage is just ridiculous. Well, tell us a little bit about how it departs from the book. Because I don't know the book well enough. Or I keep saying novel. Tell, how does it depart from the short story? I haven't read it in a long time, so I don't remember the details, but it's it's fairly loosely related. Like, there's there are some aliens that come and like you may it's it's all kind of about getting forbidden knowledge though. It's like mankind learning about his place in the universe as insignificant to these horrific elder beings that live that come from outer outer space um and there really wasn't much of that in this i mean it really apart from the name and the fact that there's aliens and they live out in rural new england there was really no relation between the book and the movie at all okay so they just kind of hijacked the title and put a is he a-list actor i don't think you could call nicholas cage an a-list actor not anymore anyway Maybe what one time he was, but, you know, everything he's been in for the last 20 years has been garbage. Did you ever see Red Rock West? No. It's so good. People love Raising Arizona, but I think Red Rock West is one of my favorites. And I know this is surprising, but I really like him in uh, in The Rock. 
Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to bring up my guilty pleasure film, which is Face Off. Yes! It's a stupid movie, but incredibly fun to watch. And I love that movie. It's so much fun. And it's got two over-the-top hammy actors, Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. It's so much fun. And then, uh, you know, I like Peggy Sue Got Married as well. A lot of his earlier movies are pretty good. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, can you imagine being in like the early to mid 90s and pitching the movie Face Off in Hollywood? Okay, so we're going to get two A-list actors and they're going to be after each other. And what we're going to have them do is surgically remove their faces, switch their faces and then surgically amend their bodies to look like one another. I mean, how do you even pitch that? It's a ridiculous concept, and it's ridiculous to have the actors kind of do impressions of each other throughout the entire movie. But man, is it ever fun. We're kind of off track here, but I'm happy to talk about Face Off for as long as you like, because it's a fun movie. This can be a good little out, so we can do some outtake videos. Okay, well, um, what would you like to see next? What, what, what in the uh, Lovecraftian oeuvre would you like to see tackled next cinematically? Well, my favorite Lovecraft story, which I talked about in the video I made for my channel about my fa top five favorite Lovecraft stories, um, is one that is not well known and is not well regarded. A lot of like literary critics think it's not one of his better stories, but I really like it. And it's called The Thing on the Doorstep. And it's got, oh, yeah. it's got body swapping and it's got like this creepy old family and it's got a woman named Asenath, which is a great name. Um, it's, it's a cool story and I really like it and it's not that well known. I think it could be adapted interestingly. Um, I'm kind of amazed they haven't done any of the like Elder God fiction, the Cthulhu mythos. Like you would think that would be prime territory for movie adaptations, but they really haven't done it. I don't know what they're waiting for. All right, so that's our take on Color of Space. Not very good. I lost interest in it about three quarters of the way through. I don't think I paid attention to the last quarter of the movie at all because it was just people screaming and lots of special effects and aliens. Um, but yeah, like, it had such promise because I like Lovecraft so much, but it, it really didn't deliver. It was just a generic alien movie with bad acting. Thumbs down. Do not recommend. And I don't know if I've ever heard you say that a film was nearly unwatchable. Yes, I did say that. Nearly unwatchable. It's it's very confusing. It doesn't make a lot of sense. No, I don't I didn't like it. Alright, well we'll wrap this up and we'll be back very soon, spoiler alert, with a new exciting episode of Film Bully Base, so stay tuned. I've been Allison Parker. I've been Logan Albright. Thank you for watching. Okay, I've got that one and then